Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Modern Warfare In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Ram 7 Assault Rifle. This is one of the new weapons that was added to the Battle Pass in Call of Duty, and I want to reiterate in the beginning that I'm reviewing it because this weapon can be earned for free in the Battle Pass. It's actually unlocked relatively early on, and it's the more popular of the two weapons because it's easier to use and understand, and I think this is the one that most people are going to gravitate toward, so I thought it would be a fun one to post gameplay of. One of the weird things that Infinity War did with this weapon, or perhaps the YouTubers that first got their hands on it, is they pitched it as a sort of assault rifle SMG hybrid because it's based on the MTAR X for Ghost or the Tavor assault rifle in real life. And it's not really a hybrid weapon, it's more of a regular assault rifle, and I think you'll see why over the course of this in-depth episode. So the first thing we should talk about is the same thing we talk about first in all the in-depths, it's the damage. It'll deal 28 damage up close and decrease down to 18 at long ranges, making it 4 to 6 shots to kill. This is really what you would kind of expect for a submachine gun. This is very like normal SMG kind of damages in COD, so you're thinking, okay, you know, it's a hybrid weapon that seems kind of hybrid E, right? Oddly, it doesn't have any unique damage areas either. Well, other than headshots. A lot of the weapons in Modern Warfare will deal less damage if you're hitting people in the limbs or in the lower chest or there's a bonus for the upper chest or something like that. This one just has an extra headshot damage, which will be 42 up close and decrease down to 27 at a distance. And it's just really rare and that this gun doesn't have any unique multipliers. Most of the assault rifles in Modern Warfare do, so I'm not exactly sure why they didn't. Maybe it was just easier to code that way. But let's talk about the rate of fire next. It'll fire at 800 55 rounds per minute, which is slightly faster than that of the M4 and kind of impressive in a lot of ways. So it's got a very good rate of fire on it for an assault rifle. I think that is the fastest full auto. No, I take that back. The M13 shoots a little bit faster, but also deals a little bit less damage. So when it comes to time to kill calculations, I think a lot of you are going to be surprised to hear that the Ram 7 actually has a theoretically faster time to kill than the M4A1. In theory, I mean, if you miss, if you hit all your shots, it will. You, you might gonna miss a few because the gun has high recoil. But this weapon has very, very high potential. About the only thing that it can't do is it can't like point blank three shot people, like say the AK or the Scar or some weapon like that. So as long as you're hitting your shots, you've got a very competitive time to kill. It won't outclass the submachine guns up close, but it is very good. The, the, the way that some machine guns will beat it is something kind of like the MP5 has a three-shot kill range and a similar rate of fire. So people will three-shot you with the MP5, whereas this one will take four, which is kind of weird because you would think that rifles would deal more damage. But let's talk about those ranges as well. The base Ram 7 has a four-shot kill range of 26 meters, which is pretty normal for assault rifles in Call of Duty, nothing exceptional there. However, when you put the barrel attachments on it, you get some pretty significant bonuses. The Eclipse barrel will take that up to 33 meters, and the XRK Ranger barrel will take that up to 38 meters, which is a huge improvement over the base range, and in my opinion, one of the better attachments for this weapon if you're going to take it into ground war, or if you're just going to try to use it for long ranges in general. These two barrels will decrease your recoil, but they also do things to your aim down sights time. The compact barrel oddly doesn't change range, but it will make your gun kick like a mule, so I really would not recommend that one. The next thing we need to talk about, which is very important on this weapon, is its handling attributes. For a weapon that's advertised as being an assault rifle SMG hybrid, you would imagine that it's probably on the faster handling end of assault rifles or that it's easier to work with, and that's really not true. The Ram 7 has a base aim down sights time of 250 milliseconds, which is pretty much standard for 5.56 assault rifles in this game. If you run the compact barrel, you're going to get 216 milliseconds, which is an improvement, but you're also going to get a lot more recoil. The XRK Ranger, which is my favorite, actually makes it a little bit worse at 283. Tack Laser, Close Quarter Stock, and Stippled Grip are 216 respectively, so those are also very helpful attachments. I was actually a little bit disappointed with the Tack Laser overall, because normally that's much, much more powerful of an attachment but in this case it had a sort of limited effect on the weapon. 
Making your weapon react faster is one of the most important things you can do, so I wanted to see what the absolute minimum aim down sights time is by stacking all of the attachments on there, and the lowest I was able to get it is about 133 milliseconds, which is close to half of its original speed, and that's not bad. You can actually make this a very fast ADS weapon. Sprint out times are way more limited. The base is 250, and the stippled and the 5 milliwatt laser only brought it down to 233, so you saved roughly a frame or two there. It's pretty rough overall. I expected a lot more from the 5 milliwatt laser. So at the end of the day, when it comes to your handling attributes on this weapon, you can make it aim down sights really fast, but you can't make it sprint out very fast. You just can't really help the sprint out time. You're just kind of stuck with that one. It will never be competitive with SMGs on sprint out time, but it can be competitive with a whole lot of weapons on aim down sights time. And this is the time of the in-depth episode where I talk to you about an Astro product. And the one I wanted to talk about was one that I think really helped save my relationship last night. too fat. Yes, they're switch compatible. <sighs> eh. What? Headsets. Sleep. No goose. Goose bad headset now. No goose headset. Okay. <laughs> Honk me. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Hmm. Thank you, Astro. No more goose. If you're interested in the Astro C40 controller, which is what I use to get all the gameplay in this video, the A40s, the A10s, any of their products, you will find a 5% off link, the very first one down there in the description, and it will discount any Astro goose dampening product on the entire website, so go ahead and click that. Even if you don't ever plan on buying one, go ahead and click that link because high click-through rate makes me look like a fantastic sponsor, and because when you look at the products, it primes your brain to buy them. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the episode. The Ram 7 recoil, is unfortunately its weakest attribute, more so even than the, the, the sprint out time you can't change. It's really all over the place. Vertical recoil is not good, but in my opinion, it's manageable. The problem is that the horizontal recoil is very bad on this weapon. It's kind of like the M4A1 of Jan Olden COD games that usually didn't kick a whole lot up, but had like really wonky side to side kick. That's effectively what you've got here. And in a game where the time to kills are so narrow and it's so easy to get picked and whatever, missing a couple of shots to the side, over swiping to compensate, which you will probably see me do, many times in this video is a bad thing and it will get you killed. This weapon is not easy to use because the recoil is not easy to use and it requires either practice or a specific setup. I'll add sort of a mental note here though. I played just a little bit on PC. I, I mostly do console gameplay here. It's way easier to use on PC. PC guys, you're not going to have a lot of trouble controlling this with the mouse. If you're using the sticks, it's going to be a little bit more problematic. That's why I think recoil stabilization attachments are critical to making the Ram 7 a good weapon. And if you remember the episode we did on recoil control, recoil stabilization is the variable that controls your horizontal recoil. So attachments like the muzzle brake or the commando grip or some of the stocks and stuff like that 
are going to be the most helpful things for this weapon and they're the ones that I'm going to be recommending later on in this episode. One of the other things I would tell you is that you should not treat this weapon like an SMG or you're going to have a bad time. It does not have the sprint out time to be competitive with SMGs. It can be a snappier assault rifle and it can be a faster assault rifle, but it is not a true SMG. Magazine size is 30 and it can be increased up to 45. In my opinion, increasing that magazine size is a very good idea given how fast you're going to burn ammo with this weapon. Your stock or supply of ammo isn't very high either, so running the extended mags to give yourself more shots or fully loaded isn't the worst idea either. But on the flip side, there's M4A1 boys all over these maps. So as long as you get a couple of kills, you can run over an M4 and pick up more 5.56 rounds. So there's a lot, there's going to be ammo laying around for you to scavenge. Maybe you could run the scavenger perk. Uh, but you will burn through your initial stock very, very quickly. Reload time is 1.75 seconds if you completely empty your magazine and 1.6 seconds full, which means you at least have one bullet in the chamber. This is pretty normal, unexceptional for assault rifles, nothing really unique about that. And let's talk about the iron sights on this weapon. The iron sights aren't too bad, but the muzzle flash is pretty brutal. Both of the new weapons actually had pretty rough muzzle flashes. If the muzzle didn't flash as much, I could probably work a lot more with the iron sights. I guess if we did like a flash suppressor or flash hider attachment, but I'd, since that doesn't really cut my recoil or anything, I don't use them. I think the iron sights are fine if you're going to do like small close quarters map, but if you're going to try to fight people at range, you're going to have a very, very rough time with all the flashing. In my opinion, the Ram 7 is one of the highest potential assault rifles in the game, but it isn't easy to use. It shoots faster than the M4 and deals similar damage in terms of shots to kill. It will have a faster time to kill than the M13 because it deals more damage. And it's one of the faster overall killing assault rifles if you're taking out like AK headshots and stuff. And if you get headshots with this weapon, it's quite nice too. But it's just not easy to use. It doesn't sprint out super fast. You can make it aim down sights really fast, but not sprint out. So you can lead to sort of a a disconnect between how fast you can aim versus how fast you can actually shoot. It has some recoil properties that are wonky to say the least. I struggled to control them so I had to use attachments to really focus in on recoil, on recoil stabilization. And if I think if you do master this weapon, if you put the time into it, it's going to spank some M4 booties, but it's not going to do it as easily. It's not going to be as, you know, sort of lackadaisical or low, low effort as the M4. The M4 guys will still punish you if you don't learn how to aim with this weapon. You're going to have to put in some serious practice to get good with this gun. And I don't think it's going to happen overnight. For a lot of you, it didn't happen for me, but the uh, I guess I have some work to do. My optimal attachment strategy is to maximize recoil stabilization, add a pair of optics for range, and some kind of aim down sights improvement. So if we were going to do that, the setup might look like putting on an optic of your choice, just, you know, some kind of optic, whichever one you like, putting on a muzzle brake and a commando grip for recoil stabilization, putting on the stippled grip tape to give you faster aim down sights time and faster sprint out time. That's a really optimal attachment for doing both. And the final one is extended mags because you're going to burn through your ammo really, really quickly. And I put an asterisk on that extended mags. If you're not worried about your ammo, if you're playing ground war, or if you're just doing, you know, if you're not worried about it, you can pull that off and instead probably put on say like a tack laser would be very, very nice. Guys, that is all for this in-depth episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. I hope that you try out the Ram 7. I think the Ram 7 was really designed for core modes and less so for ground war. It's not, not a great ground war weapon, but you can do pretty good with it in core. I would hope that you guys grind through the battle pass. I hope that most of you unlock all of this for free. And uh, if you learn anything new or unique about this weapon that I may have missed, because I'm doing these episodes pretty quickly, please let me know in the comments or Twitter or Discord or wherever. And otherwise, like, favorite, and subscribe, or buy an Astro headset. Drifter out.